My name is Jeremy Walton, and today we're gonna to be using Film Convert Nitrate with the Red Komodo. Let's go! I've done a couple videos about Film Convert and Film Convert Nitrate, but haven't shown any examples with the Red Komodo. This is one way of getting a film look for your footage. And I'm gonna say that again. This is one way, one option you may choose to get a specific look. There are plenty of other ways and different software like Resolve or you may want to create a look from scratch. All of that is up to you and can totally depend on your workflow, but for this video we're sticking with Film Convert so let's dive into it. Here's Premiere Pro and I have two clips for you in the timeline. One is at the 6th Street Bridge I took one morning when it wasn't too busy and the other I'm showing off my shoes which I've done in previous videos. I am running Film Convert Nitrate version 3.2, but for Premiere and for this project, I'm keeping everything simple. Everyone seems to be on different versions most of the time. If you use Premiere, you'll get the process. I also run a two monitor setup, so my scopes will be on a separate monitor. Oh, and I have two additional clips I will be showing you, so stick around for that. Right now you're looking at the raw footage, and I'd normally go into the red source setting and apply a conversion LUT, but today we're not gonna do that. You wanna go to effects, Type in nitrate, then drag and drop. Once you do that, the first place you wanna start is choose your camera. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with all the details because I do cover a lot in my other Film Convert videos, which I'll put links in the description. But real quick, here's the Film Convert website. Click download, then click download your camera pack. Below is all the camera packs they provide. So for us, we'll click on red, red Komodo, Mac, United States, then download camera pack. That's as basic as it can get. Once the pack is loaded, you can now choose your camera, which is red, then Komodo, your color profile, and hit apply. A few steps, and now it's time to have some fun. Okay, I am gonna make some small adjustments to the grade when it comes to white balance, exposure, curves, etc. You'll see those changes I've made within Film Convert, but they're minor, and I don't wanna spend the time in the video making adjustments. This is about the software. Here's some of those changes, but we get that. Let's talk about the film stock. Here's all your choices, and there's 19 different film stocks you can see being applied to your footage, and there's a wide range to give you a lot of options. So, if we're talking about creating a film look with a few simple steps, then you might see some advantages of using this software. This was a point I was trying to make earlier. One way to use Film Convert is to save time. It's a quick and easy way to create a film look for your projects. I don't use Film Convert on everything, it just depends on the project, time, cost, workflow, all variables that are different for everyone. You can also see these film stocks if you go to Film Convert's website, product, and film stocks. You can click on different options to get an idea of what they offer with a description. All right, let's move on. The two sliders you see here, Film Color and Cineon to Print Film, can drastically change your image depending on what you want to do. I have them set at 80 and 75%, but the 50 to 70% range is always a good starting point. The next step, which might be another reason to purchase Film Convert, and that's going to be the film grain. Again, a lot of ways to add grain. It just depends on how you want to go about it or what you like. Right here under film size, you have a wide range to pick from. The majority of the time, I'm at 35 millimeter full frame, and below is the corresponding size, softness, strength, and saturation. If I click on eight millimeter, you can see how much softness and the size of the grain increases in the image. If I go to Super 16, that gets reduced. And the same when I go back to 35 millimeter full frame or you can manually move the sliders to make your own adjustments. Another feature when it comes to the grain is being able to adjust the grain within the shadows, mids, and highlights. You can see that right here if I increase the grain response of the mids, or if I do the same for the highlights. This would be good if you wanted to push the grain in your highlights, but wanted to keep it out of your shadows. For me, the more options I have, the better. Under the color correction tab, we have the color wheels. I'm sure you've seen these before. I made some slight adjustments. For saturation, my starting point is usually 150 and I go from there. Here's the curve adjustment, which is a slight S curve and you have levels that I didn't need to touch. You can see I really didn't make a lot of adjustments, which means I didn't spend a lot of time in my grade, which might be important for your workflow. Keep in mind though, that does depend on how you shot everything, like having proper exposure. I found different stocks look better on specific shots, but that could depend on your lighting, wardrobe, set design, so it could clash or give you that certain vibe you're going for. 
For me on this little sequence of shots, I'm going with the Super X 400, which looks a little vintage to me. I like what the colors are doing, there's contrast in the shot, but everything feels on the same plane. We still have one more shot to work with, and that's the close-up of my Converse shoes. The couple of times I did this shot, I was in some boots, so now we have something different. I already went through and made my changes, but I wanna show you the results you can get. Right now, it's just looking okay. Let's look at some of these other film stocks you can pick, and with some shots, everything looks good and interesting. It's hard to choose, but let's stick with what we've been working with. And with one click, I love it. We're living in the same world, nothing too crushed, with this shot, I'm at the 80 and 75% again, and we now have two very different shots, minimal work, and have created a look that's applied to both, and maybe with some more time, you can dial in that look even further. Now, I did mention I had two other shots I wanted to include. Because I've been on a Red Komodo and Canon R3 kick lately, why not include an R3 shot since Film Convert does have those camera packs to help dial in the film look for each camera. To see what I did with these two cameras, go watch my video, The Red Komodo versus Canon R3. Can you tell the difference? And let's see how well you do with the sequence of shots I set up in the video. The other clip is going to be from my drone that I took a while ago and never had a use for until today. So that worked out. I tweaked these two clips as well, but kept it simple. Here's the R3 clip I took on a bridge looking at Minneapolis. And this is my drone shot of Los Angeles. Right now we're looking at the raw image on the R3. I'll click on film cover, then choose my camera. Canon, R3, C-Log, and apply. Here's some of the changes I made. Nothing too drastic, and I'll just pick my film stock just like before. There you go, and I think we have something that works well with the other shots. I just have to do the same thing for the drone shot, which I already did, so have a look. Here's the log footage, and I'll click nitrate and look at that. We usually don't get clouds like this in LA, so I got lucky, and if I scroll through the clips, we now have something that has a film look that's fairly uniform and done quickly. I've used Film Convert Nitrate on a lot of projects. I think it's important to understand cameras, lighting, workflows, color correction, grading, basically everything. I believe that can only make you a better filmmaker. Although that does take time and sometimes software like this can help. Even if you're an established colorist in Resolve, that doesn't mean you can't use different plugins to save yourself time. Look at it this way. It's important to know how your editing software works, how to edit clips, make transitions, and put together, let's say, a flashy intro. Something like that is a lot of work. Or you can go pay for a template where you can make slight alterations or adjustments and you're good to go. Just something to think about. You should also know Film Convert does have a program called Cinematch, where you can get sensor level camera match, raw light control over your footage, guided color correction tools, and color manage your LUTs. Another tool in your arsenal, but that's for another video. Film Convert has been a useful tool for me as a filmmaker, along with my Red Komodo. They can be a powerful combination. I really wanted to show what's possible with Film Convert, and if you're interested at all, you can always download a free trial. Well, there you have it, Film Convert Nitrate with the Red Komodo. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more on the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. Leave a comment if you plan on using Film Convert Nitrate. Until next time, it's a wrap.